my gosh, David Suchet is in Doctor Who. Who's David Suchet? What do you mean, who's David Suchet? I mean, I don't recognise the name. If he's so notable, surely you can tell me who he is. He's Poirot, the TV rendition of Agatha Christie's Poirot. Oh, well, I'll certainly have to get watching that at some point if he's so famous for it. I mean, he was pretty good in this episode. What else has he done that I might know about? Wonderful. Might as well get watching then. Wait, what's this? Hmm. I have the equipment. It's virtual reality for your ears. Hmm, sure it is. Remember in series 9 when they made an episode entirely filmed from the character's foreheads to enhance the horror of the episode and it sort of worked yet sort of didn't. This year they've brought about this new binaural thing for people with headphones to try out which I wasn't aware of until after finishing the episode. They have this stupid cringy introduction on how headphones work. Just get on with it already. Either way it's clear that the people working at the BBC have realised that more young people are watching iPlayer than the oldies and that's where all their viewers have gone. Online. This is from last year's BBC report as well, so it's no surprise the producers have done this. Did it work though? Let's tear open Knock Knock and see if all the techno hype once again lived up to its expectations. The episode opens with Bill being greeted by another batch of forgettable characters ready to be killed off by a man that normally solves the murders instead of committing them. They seem to have gotten Harry's name consistently correct this time throughout the episode, which is really great. And then they start doing some house hunting. What a mind-numbingly dull idea. Good job it only lasts just over a minute and a half with that annoying pop song playing underneath and mainly consists of them being extremely fussy. Go online and find a house, it is so much easier. The first victim of the feeding process is our poor musician. The most annoying part is that given the sound design of this episode is meant to be something bordering virtual reality, they use this stock sound effect for the record needle scratching. I have that fucking sound effect! So much for sucking us into this fictional story and forgetting about reality for just under an hour. They then make their way up to the house and we have that bizarre grandfather issue again. It makes me wonder how well Bill knows all these people given that we aren't aware of their existence until this episode. Or even better, had Shireen appeared in the pilot episode as her friend or something, we would have cared enough about her death. This whole segment with the grandfather thing is so cringy that I end up wondering why we needed an episode to show Bill moving into another house. On the one hand, it seems to suggest that their adventures are just a thing she does alongside serving chips, but she also has the whole of time and space at her hands and we are given an episode where she moves into a house that ultimately proves to be a waste of time anyway. To make matters worse, when she goes up into her extremely temporary bedroom, she shows her mum around the room, which is sweet, but is a bitter reminder that had the episode been localised on where she previously lived, we might have learned a bit more about her past. Grrr. The flatmates then gather downstairs and moan about first world problems for a bit instead of discussing the very real problems within the house. Let me get this straight then. All these idiots have got their rooms set up and bearing in mind young people do tend to have a lot of electrical products, none of them had a good moan about the fact none of their TVs are working or their phones are charging. They had to have the doctor point out these issues with the house to them instead. As if these kids haven't got enough shit to worry about, the landlord then magically enters the house. Is nobody here concerned at all that two old men could enter this house without warning? Nah, too busy wondering about the bloody washing machine. Capaldi in this episode seems to be behaving like he did in those ghastly episodes from the last two series where he just does weird quirky things to distract us from the story. The prawn cracker munch, the grandfather nonsense, and then the little mix bollocks as well. Alright, here's my proposal on how we could have cleared all that up. Have Bill move into this house with her, shall we say, acquaintances, and then the horrific stuff starts building up. The flatmates go missing, they all start panicking, and then introduce the doctor into the story so he can help out in this bizarre situation Bill's found herself in. He is just so annoying in the first part of this episode that this alternate scenario would have been much more appropriate, not only for the horror element, but could have also given us some time to learn more about these people she's moved in with. So there's a musician, Bill's supposed friend Shireen, 
A guy who shares my name and not a lot else. A Scottish guy who fancies Bill but ends up being pointless because she's a lesbian. And a girl who can't be trapped for some reason. I can't be trapped! I can't be trapped! That girl then hilariously gets the evil dead treatment outside the house. Whilst Pavel then moulds with the wall, which, for some reason, I didn't find scary. It's certainly an odd notion, but for whatever reason, I just sat and accepted that a forgettable character has been sacrificed to the wood. The Doctor then lures out the little alien wood lice, which looks great when there's only one on screen, but then as soon as the rest comes out, the budget of the show springs to mind again. They could have used the binaural sound effects to their advantage here. Have the creeping, crawling, scratching noises move close and around the ears as Harry and the Doctor stare around the room in fright. It would have been amazing. Atop the tower, we see the landlord's mother come out from her hiding. This part genuinely struck a nerve for me because God damn, she is creepy. The makeup team did a bloody good job on creating the wooden girl, and the CGI department also in making the bug crawl out of her mouth. It's just, ugh. Another creepy part came right about that time too, when Harry and the doctor find images of previous tenants moving in and running in fear at the infestation. They find out that this happens every 20 years, but I can't quite convince myself into believing that this can possibly be true. If so many people go missing every 20 years, why wasn't this investigated by the police? I mean, surely their previous housemates or family would have been a bit concerned that they all just disappeared right after moving into that house! It was, however, a nice twist that the landlord was the wood lady's son and not father, but I must ask what reason he had for lying. If nobody was allowed to go up the tower in the first place, how would any of them know how young or old she was? I love how Eliza went along with the lie as well, but I guess when you've started becoming a vegetable, you do start to develop dementia, which, in my opinion, strengthens the twist even further. I question the fact that the landlord was left in this giant house to look after his mother alone, but I have a grisly feeling that all the servants and other family members that lived in the house were probably consumed like the tenants. I must say, though, that given how awful the opening segments are, everything starts turning more positively following the twist. The landlord tries to feed his mother with the last two remaining people in the house, only for her to control them away from him. Like the son has misbehaved so much that confiscating his toys is a suitable punishment here. This was then tied up with the fireworks going on outside. It must be an absolutely amazing sight to see, given that she's been locked up in this room without an inch of sunlight for many decades. The chick then refuses to leave the nest, and as punishment, the mother decides to destroy it by having herself and her son consumed by the bugs. Unfortunately, we have to have the mandatory they weren't dead after all ending. And I say unfortunately, because let's be honest here, nobody would have cared if they had remained dead until the end of the episode. It would have been cool to have this ending if all of the other people that were consumed within the house had come out too, linking the boxes Doc and Harry found earlier in the episode. I will grant that if they stay dead, Bill's trauma probably would be through the roof at this point. A dead child, human remains being ground up. Then to add her friends being eaten alive by alien wood lice, probably would not have done her sanity much good. No bullshit this week, guys. It's my turn to do this segment of the video. This isn't the first time Peter Capaldi has worked with David Suchet. He was also in an episode of Poirot back in 1991 titled Wasp's Nest. Lubricated horse cock. The character of Harry was originally written in to be the grandson of Harry Sullivan, a companion from Tom Baker's era. I don't understand. I genuinely thought the actor who played Harry also played Richard in the Inbetweeners movie at first. Richard, yeah? Richard! This episode was shot in the same location as the house in Blink. I couldn't tell this immediately, but apparently it's like the back door of the house is shown or something. If someone could clarify that in the comments, that'd be great. The Doctor says the line, sleep is for tortoises in the episode, which is what Tom Baker said in the episode, The Talons of Wang Chiang, back in 1977. Simply blown away. This is where I'm gonna slot my ramble about the poor use of the surround sound in this episode. It honestly adds nothing notable to the experience of the episode. There's a massive slam that's heard in the kitchen at one point, which sounded good, but didn't provide any immersive effect, i.e. I didn't turn my head to see what had made that noise in my room when I heard it. If you want a good video 
video that does the binaural audio thing perfectly, check out the Virtual Barbershop, link is in the description. Throughout the episode, the sounds of creaking and knocking are extremely excessive. You'd think given how much effort they put into the virtual reality for the years thing, that bombarding you with sounds from all over the place would be the wrong way to go. Nothing made me jump during this episode, and the only time there was any form of build-up was when the Doctor was mucking about in that cupboard. During the scene where the Scottish bloke goes to bed and all the knocks can be heard coming from here, there and everywhere, on a first viewing I genuinely laughed because it was so absurd. And I wasn't even doing the binaural thing at this point. The virtual version adds absolutely jack shit. It just makes it seem like it's coming from places inside my headphones instead of my room. So, did it suck? To be perfectly honest, I think that this episode is another example of an experiment gone wrong in the writing department. We saw it with Sleep No More uh, in 2015, but this experiment was a bit more of a disaster purely because of the inconsistency with its use in the story. Putting the audio thing aside though, this episode wasn't anything special either. Although the parts of the story that didn't include any of those forgettable flatmates were better than the ones they were in, the twist was great, the design elements were fantastic, and the closing segment was very creepy, supported of course by Suchet's performance in the episode. Alongside a few other notable moments, that's about it for positives, unfortunately for me. The flatmates were possibly the most irritating and pointless aspect of the episode, which had a dull premise, lingered on the cringy grandfather thing for too long, and it sucks just how unbelievable everything seems to be given how many people have died in this house. I give Knock Knock a 3 out of 10. Absolute... <laughs> they use this stock sound effect for the n so he can help out in this bizarre situation he's found herself in. Oh, I see what I've written here. Fucking hell. Oh, Bill. <laughs>